if you fancy flying off of aircraft carriers with your friends, stay tuned. This is how JoinFS can let you do it. Hello, and thanks for watching. This is quite a long video, sorry about that. Split into two parts. The first section will be how to download recommended aircraft carriers and aircraft, and the second bit will be how to use JoinFS to bring it all together so you can fly with your friends. There's a program called AI Carriers that enables you to set up um, carriers uh, to move as you wish in your simulator. If you do an internet search for FSX USS Nimitz, it gives you a couple of results. One is Riku, one is Flyway Simulation. I've used both of those. And these downloads couple together the AI Carriers program and the model of the carrier themselves all in one package. So when you install it, that's all you need to do. Flying together with your friends on these carriers, it's easier if you both install these packages, then you've got identical models and you've both got AI carriers installed. On the download, just watch out for the name Javier Fernandez, just to make sure that it is the correct one. These models are exquisitely um, produced. Why people do this for free, I've no idea. But like so many things in FSX and P3D, over the years, people have just released this stuff for free. Fantastic resource. When you download it, it inserts the model into your boats folder within the simulator. If you go into the USS Nimitz folder and scroll right down to the bottom to the configuration file, there's one tweak that I'd like to make. By default, they've set it so the speed is 50 miles per hour, which I think is probably a little bit fast. So, so I'm going to turn that down. At the bottom of the sim config file, uh, you've got the maximum speed. You can change that and save the file. Next is to download a suitable aircraft. In FSX, you have the default um, fighter, which is suitable, but there are some great models that have been released. If you do a search for India Foxtrot Echo, it takes you to the website of Dino Catanio. Sorry if I've said that wrong, Dino. And he uh, makes payware aircraft, but also releases some freeware models. And his uh, T-45 Goshawk model is pretty amazing for freeware aircraft. That's the one I recommend you download to start with. So this aircraft has a tail hook and is perfect for carry operations. After installing both of those, when you start your simulator, FSX asks you for permission to run the AI carriers add-on. And then once in the aircraft, in the add-ons menu at the top of the screen, you can choose the AI carriers control panel, and that will allow you to deploy a fleet. You get pages worth of different configurations, and you can deploy them in your current position or just ahead, five miles ahead, 10 miles ahead, so on. So I'm going to deploy a fleet 10 miles ahead. And as long as you've got the AI boats button enabled in little nav map, they'll show up in that. We'll fly by here and go into slew mode so we can take a closer look. This one is the USS Nimitz, beautifully modeled, um, different configurations on the deck, depending on which model you choose from the control panel. There's a lift that goes up and down. You can taxi your plane onto it and descend down inside the uh, carrier, should you wish. From the rear, you'll see the lights on the left-hand side of the deck. Uh, this is like the equivalent of Pappy lights. When the center one is in line with the others, you're on the glide slope. If it's above, you're too high. If it's below, you're too low.
In the AI carrier's control panel, you can also start them moving. So I'm going to set that moving forwards and to help you find them in the add-ons menu you can request a, a location report. When they're moving, because they have a wake trailing behind them, they are easier to spot and also that wake is quite useful for your approach to the carrier. We'll talk about that later on. This model is fitted with an ILS frequency of 112.0 and when you've tuned that in, you get a course indicator on your instruments that shows you the heading of the boat and you get a little arrow in your head-up display. You can also find out the heading of the boat by clicking on it in Little Nav Map and it shows you at the side what the heading is and you'll need to know that for your approach. The landing deck of the carrier is offset 10 degrees to the left of the boat's heading so as you approach it, you'll find you come along the right-hand side of the wake to land. Uh, don't forget to put your tail hook down, obviously, or you're going to look pretty stupid. And this isn't actually the proper way to land on a carrier. So to find out the proper way to do it, you should research Case 1 Carrier Rejoin. And you should also find out what these symbols mean. The lights to the left of the head-up display the little E symbol and the circle, but essentially the little circle needs to be within the E symbol, which will mean that you get a yellow donut shape on the left hand side. That means you've got the correct angle of attack as you approach. If you've got the wrong angle of attack, your hook will miss the wires. So apart from being to left, this is on uh, the right side of the glide slope. I'm not interested in comments about my approach, thanks very much. This video is more about how to set up the models and whatnot. So that is the model of the carrier and the aircraft set up. So the next stage, if you want to fly with your friends, is to set up Join FS so you can share the carrier. If we look in the Join FS manual, we're referring to the objects view, and it gives you a bit of information about that. But one key thing that we've learned, which is a top tip, in JoinFS for Carrier Operations, go to File Settings and untick Elevation Correction. I'll show you why in a moment. So for land-based operations, keep it ticked. For Carrier Operations, untick it. If you don't untick it, here's my friend coming into land. And when they get right up to the boat, all of a sudden they just disappear down below the deck. What they see is fine, they see themselves landing on the deck, but an, another observer sees them disappearing. You can fix this by them slewing upwards till they're above the deck and then dropping back down and the elevations are again synchronised. But with the elevation correction turned off, I'm flying alongside and yeah, he's coming in nice and smooth and we see him landing correctly. So to set up the sharing, the first pilot has deployed the fleet. You can see them in little nav map. And then in join FS, they need to select view and objects. You see a list of objects here. You need to make sure that the ones you want to broadcast to the other people are ticked in the broadcast column. And then the other users need to give the first pilot, the lead pilot, permissions to broadcast those extra objects. So they select view users, find them in the column, select permissions and then tick allow multiple objects. Once they do that, the boats should appear in their simulator as well. So from then on in, it's just about learning how to do a proper carrier landing. Uh, there's some stuff here to look up and a bit of research to be done. And I'll put this text in the description. If you don't have the same model carrier as the person that's broadcasting, um, 
it's not like an aircraft. F Join FS won't try and find a substitute. So you will see wake in the water, but you won't see a boat. Mm. If they are parked on the deck, you will just see them hovering above the water, but you won't actually see the carrier. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.